Testing one, two. Hola, hola, buenas noches. Buenas tardes. <coughs> Vamos a empezar pronto. Excelente. Muy bien, vamos a empezar pronto. Me gusta, Haley, tu gato. ¿Cómo se llama tu gato? Se llama Maggie. Maggie, tu gato es gato o gata? Gata. Eso es gata, muy bien. Tu gata se llama Maggie. Muy bien, excelente. Yo tengo una gata también. Mi gata se llama Siena. Ok, vamos a empezar pronto. Hoy es jueves. Son las seis y dos. Y tenemos que hablar de mucho, mucho hoy. Ok, ok. For the next couple of minutes, we'll probably have some people rolling in. We'll, we're just going to jump right into it. Um, yeah, without waiting. Sin esperar. Muy bien. ¿Cómo están todos? ¿Cómo están todos? Muy bien. Cansado. Uh, mucho trabajo, ¿no? Mucho trabajo durante la semana. Yo también tengo mucho trabajo durante la semana. Que hoy es jueves. Um, es el 8 de febrero y son las 6 y 3. Um, we might not go until 8 o'clock. I mean, you guys have been really great with the past couple of weeks, uh, not having a break and, and sticking with, it, with me. Uh, we are going to do an entire review today because, as you can see, I posted a module today. And there is an assessment that you'll be completing sometime before next Friday. Uh, with all the information in chapters Bienvenidos in chapter uno. And uh, I want to go through sort of each section of the expectations on what you should know. Um, and I've got sample um, questions that simulate what you're going to experience. I don't want to, I want everything transparent. And don't th I don't want to throw anything at you that you're not prepared for. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, start the lesson right now and we'll get into it. So if we end a little early, we end a little early. Uh, we'll just kind of pace ourselves, see how far we get. Ok, perfecto. Ok, aquí estamos. Uh, voy a poner la clase aquí. I'm going to put it on the other screen so I can see y'all. Take me two seconds to do that. I'm going to go ahead and check the chat. So anybody has a question, I'll open up the chat and be able to see that. All right. And if anybody comes along and enters the class, I have the student list right here. I'll just admit people. Okay, so I think I got it ready to go. So we can uh, have some success. Okay, perfecto. I'm going to go ahead and mute everybody just in case you've not all been muted. And we'll ask you to speak up occasionally throughout. So hopefully we can pay attention. Excelente. Vamos a empezar el día de hoy. Um, can we all see the screen? Somebody give me a thumbs up. Yeah, okay, perfecto. Un repaso, bienvenidos y capítulo uno, lección número cuatro, el módulo número cuatro. Okay, as always, we've got some connect information you do weekly to review all the cool stuff, all the information is hosted on Canvas. And I always like to say, look at your feedback. There have been some discussion boards that I really love watching you attempt to use your Spanish. Some of you are doing a really good job. And not all, of my, not all of my students take advantage of my feedback. So whenever I have you, whenever I review your posting, I give a video feedback of your errors. And you might not have any errors and I might just say good job. But some of the times there are some things that I want to point out, like careful this pronunciation or careful not to use this word, or maybe you can use that word. And that's valuable feedback to you. So I really want you to get in the habit of looking at that. And you just simply go to grades, click on the assignment itself, not the little clipboard on the side, but the actual assignment. And you'll open it up to the page where it shows my video 
giving you some feedback. If you have questions about that, let me know. Sometimes I ask you a question in that feedback. There are a couple of you that I, I struggled a little bit on trying to understand what you said. And I asked you, I said, well, what were you trying to say? What? Give me the sentence that you intended to say, and then I can help you say it correctly. So I really want you to capitalize on that. A couple of you um, are committing the same error with saying your name. Like an example would be me llamo S Adams. And I tell you, hey, watch out. You don't need to put the S in there. It's just me llamo Adams, me llamo Brian. And and you're repeating it. So you're not looking at my feedback. So my recommendation is definitely look at that and we can kind of capitalize on those common errors and help you improve. Okay. Perfecto. ¿Cómo estás hoy? En el chat, por favor, necesitan escribir. Yo estoy blank. ¿Cómo estás hoy? Yo estoy blank. Yo estoy muy bien hoy. Estoy feliz. Um, estoy ocupado. I'm very busy. Pero estoy muy bien. How are you? ¿Cómo están? Let's throw some chat in there. ¿Cómo están hoy? ¿Cómo están? Okay. There, there we go. Estoy muy bien. Estoy bien. Estoy cansada. Ya. Yeah, yo también estoy uh, enferma. Lo siento, Amanda. Estoy ocupada. Estoy muy bien. Estoy cansado. Excelente. Good. Cansado. Cansada. Cansado. Cansada. Chica. Cansada. Chico, cansado. Excelente. Uh, muy bien. Excelente. Uh, fantástico. Estoy fantástico. Ocupado. Busy. Ocupado. Estoy comiendo. Ok. Excelente. Mía está comiendo. ¿Y qué estás comiendo, Mía? Mac and cheese. Oh, mac and cheese. Excelente. A mí me gusta. Mac and cheese. Excelente. Me gusta el mac and cheese. Ok, perfecto. Estoy bien. Um, ¿Qué día es hoy? ¿Hoy es lunes? No. Huh. ¿Qué día? El, muy bien. El día. El día. Día is interesting. It ends in an A, but it's masculine. El día. Muy bien. Hoy es. Today is. Hoy es. Viernes. No. Jueves. Excelente. Hoy es jueves. Se pronuncia así. Jueves. Jueves. ¿Qué hora es? ¿Qué hora es? ¿Qué hora es? We haven't talked about the hour specifically, but I'd like to throw it out already. We're going to do this every week. ¿Qué hora es? Sí. Son las. That's how we establish an hour. It is. Son las. If it were one, it would be es la. So son las seis y ocho. So even though we haven't talked about it, you can kind of see a pattern. Son las seis Y ocho, son las seis y nueve, son las seis y diez, etcétera, etcétera, etcétera. Ok, perfecto, vamos. El al abecedario, A, E, I, O, U, always remember the pronunciation, it doesn't change. It's always going to be A, always going to be E, etc., etc. Let's go ahead and repeat these. I always like to do these each week just to, just to visually see them because we don't use them a lot. Ok, so if you want to. Uh, unmute yourself to, to speak up. You can, if you want to keep yourself mute, mute, muted and just say it out loud to yourself. That's also fine. Whatever you're comfortable with. Okay. Um, vamos a empezar. Everybody, here we go. Cero. 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 Muy bien. Uno. 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 Dos. 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 Tres. Tres. Cuatro. Cuatro. Cinco. 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 Seis. 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 Siete. Siete. Ocho. 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 Nueve. Nueve. Diez. Diez. Once. Once. Doce. Doce. Trece. Trece. Catorce. Catorce. Quince. Quince. Dieciséis. Dieciséis. Diecisiete. Diecisiete. Dieciocho. 18, 18, 19, 19, 20, 20, 20, 
30. 30. Excelente. Muy, muy, muy bien. Gracias. Is por... the E on the six supposed to have the accent mark? Uh, yes. 26. That has an accent mark. So you can see these little accent marks. 16 has it. 26 has it. And 23 has it. You're yes. missing it on the six. But... Oh, no, no, no. Not on, this, not on six. Not on that one? Okay. Uh... Not on the six, on the ones that end in six. So 16, 26, okay, but, okay. Not, but not on the six. That's that's a monosyllabic word. There's no there's no need to put seis on, okay. on the singular six. Yeah, good question. I thought you meant 16, 26, those that ended in in uh, in six. Okay, excelente. Muy buena pregunta. Muy buena pregunta. Okay, uh, perfecto. Uh, as we get more in advanced Spanish, there's an actual rule on how accents work, and we get get into that later. Hopefully, we touch upon it this semester. If not, okay. in 402, definitely. This is a page that was in the textbook that we haven't discussed yet because I usually um, review these in a face-to-face -face setting because in an online setting, I don't. you're not typically using these. I won't tell you to sit down or stand up. Um, or open up your book. I mean, I could say close your book and open your book, but these are all face-to-face -face setting, but I want you to see them. Now, this is using commands, and we don't learn about commands, how to form them until uh, the next level, until the next semester. So these are sort of memorized expressions, but know that the, you're using the pronoun ustedes. You can use vosotros in Spain, but it's more typical in California for you guys Ustedes. So when you see them, for example, escriban, this is a command to say write. Now, just one little thing I'm pointing out. We're going to get into present tense verb conjugations in the next month. And you'll notice that if I say they write, like they write every day, it would be ellos escriben, E-N, todos los días, every day, for example. Ellos escriben. So you might be looking at that and going, wait a minute, I thought it was an ER verb. Why isn't it escriben? Because I'm not saying they write. I'm telling them or you guys, not them. I'm telling you guys to write. So it might look different, but don't worry about that now. These are just set expressions, but I just wanted you to see them. Escriban, escriban ustedes. Tenemos, pónganse de pie. That literally means put yourself on your feet. Pónganse de pie. Uh-oh, that's a typo. I'm going to fix it right now. Um, actually, let me get back that. I can't have a typo here the whole time now, can I? Um, there is a typo. Anybody catch that little typo? I'm going to fix it right in front of you just so we can have a correction. I saw it right away. This is supposed to be D-E? D-E, yeah. And uh, I put D-I. That is a very quick typo and i don't know why my eyes didn't check it out earlier when i was reviewing the lesson sometimes but in the moment we caught it and i'm sure one of you smart young students would have grabbed a hold of that but i'm changing it right now to day and i'll get i'll come right back in there appreciate it just gonna take me two seconds to update the slide we want to do it live so if you're watching the video recorded they know that what the correct spelling is all right, let's put that back in place. Got this por su. Um, there we go. Okay. Muy bien, muy bien. Let's go back and share that. Okay, here we go. Okay. Perfecto. Escriban. Pónganse de pie. Pónganse de pie. Siéntense. Now, this say, I'm not going to go into detail on why it's there. Just know that these are called reflexive verbs, and you'll eventually hear that again. But pónganse, siéntense, lean, lean ustedes, lean, cierren el libro, and they're all on this visual here. Cierren el libro, excelente, abran el libro. You can use this same thing for the door or the window. Cierren la puerta. Abran la puerta. Okay. Saquen el bolígrafo. And you could take out anything. Take out your cell phones. Saquen el teléfono celular. Saquen un, un lápiz, a pencil. Um, 
Cuenten, that's count. And contar means a couple different things, but in this case, count. Cuenten hasta el número 10. Count to 10, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Y escuchen, escuchen. Y hoy vamos a escuchar. Today we're going to listen. So escuchen bien. Listen up. Escuchen bien. Okay. So I just wanted to show you them in case you're confronted with that in any type of experience. One little cultural thing that's referenced in the book that I just want to mention before we do our review. I have my full name and my wife's full name here as an example. I, yo soy de los Estados Unidos. So I'm from the United States. I was born here. And traditionally, now it does not have to be this way, but I'm using that word traditionally as a vast number of people do this. Traditionally, a person might have a first name, a middle name, and a last name. So when you look at this name, Grant Christopher Adams, if you are raised here, you're typically going to default to say, oh, Adams must be his last name. Christopher must be his middle name. That's kind of a default impression we get. So the name down below, Ines Maria Garcia Moreno, you're confused. You're like, well, there are four names there. So what's going on here? I'm going to explain. Okay. You've got primer nombre, the first name. Segundo nombre, translated as second name, but we say middle name. And we say rightfully so. We have a first and last, so there must be a middle. Then Spanish, it's second name because there's no middle name. You, you, there's two names in this middle of equation here. So it's the second name. Primer nombre, segundo nombre, and then you've got apellido paterno. So the last name, apellido, apellido. Paterno is the paternal last name. Notice mine's Adam. So I got that name from my dad. Now, like I said, this is traditional. Put that in quotes because you can have your mother's last name or your adopted name, whatever the situation is. There's always going to be uh, different circumstances. Um, so um, the paternal name goes before in the Hispanic world, the maternal name. So Ines has two last names, Garcia and Moreno. And Moreno comes from her mom. Now the mom, she got Moreno from her dad. So you can see that the names are passing on to children that both the paternal names of both parents transfer over one with the child becomes the maternal name, but then with a generation or with the next child, that name disappears. So my daughter, her name is Ariana, Gabriela, and then you have Adams. And what name is going to go after Adams? It's going to be Garcia. So Moreno goes bye-bye. Garcia transfers. So it's the paternal name that transfers over. So if I had, if- I have a question. Yeah, go ahead. What happens when she gets married? Does she lose both last names and take yours traditionally? <laughs> that is a great question. So I'm, I'm actually going to tell you when my wife, she's from Spain, and when she became uh, a resident, she had to get a green card. And it's actually green, believe it or not. I thought it was just a thing, but it's an actual green card. On her green card, she doesn't lose any of the names. You tack on De Adams. Now, that's not as trendy currently because it shows possession. And we're, you know, we want, we're moving as a society as far as equality and whatnot. So, uh, it's not, these are, these are names that are in written on documents. So she would, in real life, she would never go by Ines Maria Garcia Moreno de Adams, but that's on an official document. Ines Maria Garcia Moreno de Adams. I love the, the Hispanic culture because you don't lose your names. So she doesn't take on Adams and replace Garcia Moreno. It's not Ines Maria Adams. It's just Ines Maria Garcia Moreno. So in real life, I would go by Grant Adams and she would go by Ines Garcia. So she wouldn't go by Ines Adams. Now, could she go by Ines Garcia de Adams? Sure. Or sh could she go by Ines de Adams? Well, you got to tack on the day. But in none of my wife's driver's license, credit card, marriage license, it doesn't say Ines Adams. It says Ines Garcia. But on official uh, immigration documentation, it will say Ines Maria Garcia Moreno de Adams. So if I look at her name, I hope I hopefully answered your question. If I go with her name, the Ines Garcia Moreno, 
usually what happens in a person that grows up here, if they look at that name, they're going to think Garcia is the middle name right away. They're going to be like, Oh, Garcia must be the middle name. But if you live and grow up in a, the Hispanic world and you look at that name, you're going to think that that person has two last names. So if they look at my name, Grant Christopher Adams, they're going to think that I don't have a middle name. I, Christopher must be the paternal last name and Adams must be the maternal last name. So it's interesting, our perception on names. So right now, and at least in Spain, it's very trendy to not have a second name, not have a middle name. So all you see is Ines Garcia Moreno. And to a typical person here, we would think she must have Garcia as her middle name, but not so. So in order to avoid any type of confusion here, if people want to carry two last names, it's often hyphenated just to avoid somebody thinking it's a middle name. Um, so that's just a way to work around it here. But it's interesting, the cultural um, historical reference to last names. If you ever traveled internationally, I know some of you have probably. And when you get that paperwork they have to fill out when you're coming back in through immigration, it'll ask you, what is your first surname? And what is your second surname? It'll ask you for both surnames. And, you're, and you're, you, some people often think, well, what are they referring to to that second surname? It's your second last name, the name you got from your mom. So technically, my mom's maiden name, before she took on Adams marrying my dad, her maiden name's Thompson. So if I were to have my name like my wife's name, it would be Grant Christopher Adams Thompson. And she got that name from her dad. So interesting how that works. So fun cultural fact on names. Okay, perfecto. Vamos a practicar. Okay, examen, información, repaso, step by step. Paso a paso, vamos a empezar con una grabación, sección auditiva. On the test, you're going to have an audio section. So I have a sample here. I'm going to play it for you. There's one question down below, and I intentionally have this one because I just talked about it. <laughs> Number one, el apellido, last name, el apellido de la madre de Claudia S. So it's saying, what is Claudia's last name from mom. Now, if you didn't know the concept of the paternal and the maternal name, you'd be like, well, I don't know. It, it, it sounds like they just said three names. So I don't know which one's which. But if, if I said Ines Garcia Moreno, your answer would be Moreno. That comes from mom. Garcia comes from dad. So el apellido. So I want you to listen to us. See if you can grab that correct last name. Not only do I want you to listen for the name, I want you to listen to the rest of the conversation. See if you can understand what they're saying throughout the conversation. I've written down some notes. I'm going to ask some follow-up follow questions. So we're going to listen to it once and see if we can go ahead and regurgitate what was being said. Hola, ¿cómo te llamas? Buenos días. Me llamo Claudia Cuellar Arapi. ¿Y tú? Me llamo Eloy Ramírez Ovando. Mucho gusto. Igualmente. ¿Eres estudiante? Sí. ¿Y tú eres profesor? No. <risa> Yo también soy estudiante. Oye, tu camiseta es roja. No es un color de cal. No, pero el rojo es mi color favorito. Es mi color favorito también. Interesante. Los vaqueros son mi ropa favorita. Las faldas cortas son mi ropa favorita. Sí, claro. ¿Yo? <risa> Los hombres no llevan falda. Es muy cómico. Y tú eres bonita y simpática. Gracias. Ay, tengo clase ahora. Adiós, Eloy. Hasta luego, Claudia. Corre. Okay. And with my students during the day, I always like to say, listen to it multiple times. And I always play every audio twice. The second time you pick up on couple more things. We're going to play it one more time. This time, try to take notes. What are some details you picked up? Okay. Hola. ¿Cómo te llamas? Buenos días. Me llamo Claudia Cuellar Arapi. ¿Y tú? Me llamo Eloy Ramírez Ovando. Mucho gusto. Igualmente. ¿Eres estudiante? Sí. ¿Y tú eres profesor? No. <risa> Yo también soy estudiante. Oye, tu camiseta es roja. 
No es un color de cal. No, pero el rojo es mi color favorito. Es mi color favorito también. Interesante. Los vaqueros son mi ropa favorita. Las faldas cortas son mi ropa favorita. Sí, claro. ¿Yo? <risa> Los hombres no llevan falda. Es muy cómico. Y tú eres bonita y simpática. Gracias. Ay, tengo clase ahora. Adiós, Eloy. Hasta luego, Claudia. ¡Corre! <risa> ok, ok, ok. Pregunta. O oh, la frase, the sentence, la frase, el apellido de la madre de Claudia es, ¿cuál es el apellido? A ver, podemos escribir en el chat, ¿qué apellido es? ¿Qué apellido es? A ver. Ok, ok. Muchas respuestas. Excelente, ok. Ok, you already starting to get it. Excelente, muy bien. Arapi. Now, if you heard her name, it's Claudia Cuellar Arapi. So you would think, okay, those are three names that I just heard. So Cuellar must be the middle name. No, no, no. In the Hispanic-speaking mindset, when you hear three names, you default and say, they must not have a middle name because they always have two last names. That's kind of a default setting. Claudia Cuellar Arapi, and the second one, the last one, comes from mom. So Claudia Cuellar Arapi. Now, if Claudia were to sign up for a class, she probably would only go by Cuellar, Claudia Cuellar, Miss Cuellar, Mrs. Cuellar. But she's not, you don't typically use both last names when you speak to somebody like, hey, what's your name? Hello, my name is Grant Adams Thompson. No, it's just Grant Adams. What is your name, ma'am? My name is Ines Garcia Moreno. No, it's just Ines Garcia. So don't think that you're verbally going to use both last names every time somebody asks your name. But on documentations, on your passport, on your driver's license, on your credit cards, you'll have the full documented name. Okay, muy bien. Okay, excelente. Um, el apellido paterno. El apellido paterno de Eloy. ¿Qué es el apellido paterno de Eloy? Okay, okay, excelente. Muy bien, clase. Ramírez. Muy bien, Ramírez. Muy bien. Um, ¿El apellido materno de Eloy? ¿El apellido materno de Eloy? Ok. Ok, ok. Obando. Ok, muy bien. Obando. Ok. ¿Eloy? ¿Sí o no? ¿Eloy es profesor? ¿Sí o no? Ok. Ok. ¿Qué es Eloy? ¿Qué es? ¿Qué es Eloy? Él no es profesor. ¿Qué es? Ok, él es estudiante. Ok, muy bien clase. Él es estudiante. ¿Qué color es su camiseta? ¿Qué color es? ¿Es una camiseta azul, gris, amarilla? Ya, yeah, el color rojo. Muy bien, el color rojo. Y rojo es su color favorito. Ok. La ropa favorita de Eloy. ¿Cuál es la ropa favorita de Eloy? ¿Ustedes recuerdan? Ok. Muy bien, vaqueros. And we remember, vaqueros is commonly used in Spain. In Latin America, it's, it's probably going to be pantalones, jeans, uh, blue jeans, um, de mezclilla. Um, so you might not hear vaqueros here in California. Ok. Um, la ropa favorita de Claudia. ¿Cuál es? ¿Cuál es? Ajá. Uh -huh. Ok. Una falda corta. Corta. ¿Cómo se dice corta en, en inglés? ¿Cómo se dice corta? Una falda corta. Ok. Excelente. Short. Muy bien. A lot of my students think of short as in height and they use the word corta but corta is short as in length so the length of the skirt if i'm going to say i am short as a my height what word is that okay bajo or baja okay well you guys are rock stars today bajo baja okay what is the opposite of corto 
Okay. Careful. We're not talking about, we're good. Good. We're not talking about height. We're talking about length. So largo, largo. What is the opposite of bajo? Okay. Alto. Now here's another tricky one. You said largo. Does that mean large? Sounds like large. Oh, it means long. Como se dice large in Espanol? Okay. See, look at that. You're working out the, all these different adjectives, opposites and false cognates. Okay, great. Excelente. Excelente. ¿Qué, podemos, qué más podemos aprend, comprender? What more can we understand? Well, you showed me plenty. We don't even need to answer that. Excelente. Okay. Vocabulario. Let's see if you can remember what something I mentioned at the beginning of class. ¿Cuál es el mandato? What are they doing? ¿Cuál es el mandato? Hey. What's happening here? One of these commands, the teacher just asked them to do something and they're doing it. Anybody I want to type that in? Okay. 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 Excelente. Levanten la mano. Raise your hand. Levanten la mano. Excelente. So these are kind of sample sections on what you might experience. Let's finish this phrase here. Termina la serie. Term finish the ending. 24, 25, 26. Yeah, well, some of you are really quick typers. 27, excelente. 27, muy, muy, muy bien. So there's sample random vocab. Now, I do want to get into some sort of the descriptions and clothing and the verb ser and llevar. Okay, but we've got uh, another example of using our, our introductory language. ¿Cómo estás? Um, muy bien. Uh, mucho gusto. Igualmente. We've got a phrase here. It says, hola. ¿Cómo te llamas? What is an appropriate response? Adiós. Estoy bien, gracias. Igualmente. Se llama Rodrigo. Soy Claudia. ¿Cuál es la respuesta? A ver, a ver. Yeah, they're, <laughs> I agree. They're very quick. Yeah, that's okay. I'm, I'm a slow typer, so so uh, I'll be patient. I'm just, you can always type it in. Even if it comes in later, you can always just practice typing it. Okay, excellent, excellent. Okay, I'm seeing, give, it, give another beat here for those that are taking a little bit of time. Okay, definitely want to give everybody some, their own space to be able to progress. Um, ¿Cómo te llamas? Soy Claudia. Now you can say, me llamo Claudia, mi nombre es Claudia, or soy Claudia. What is your name? I'm Claudia. Excelente. Okay. Vocabulario, una descripción. Este hombre es gordo. No es blank. El opuesto de gordo. El opuesto. Excelente. Es delgado. Muy bien. Es delgado. No es gordo. Es delgado. So on your test, you might have to identify some opposites. Let's do a couple more for the fun of it, shall we? Okay. Ella no es alta. Es. Okay. Okay. Excelente. Excelente. Ella no es alta. Ella es baja. Now notice how we didn't say bajo because we're saying ella. All that gender must be in sync. Ella no es alta. Es baja. Okay. Número dos. Muy bien, clase. Él no es joven. Es Muy bien. Careful, careful how we end that word. Ed. I have a question about viejo and vieja. Yes. Uh, I was talking to somebody who is from Mexico who speaks Spanish. And she, when I was like trying to describe and practice with her, she was telling me not to refer to somebody as vieja or viejo. And that was disrespectful. And that she says it's more um, like grande de años, like a, a large number for their age versus like trying to describe them as old. I'm going to disagree. Now, obviously, if you are talking to somebody and I say, hey, tú eres viejo, you can always use it as an insult. Ah, you're so old. But it's interesting that she would say that because, uh, Usually when we describe somebody, the, the buzzwords that catch a little heat here, like fat, old, they, 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 they have a little bit of strength to those words. Not so. In fact, I'm going to go even further. 
people call their spouses old as a term of endearment. Go back to that same friend and ask him. I have a friend that says, mi viejo, my, my, my husband, she calls him my old guy. Hey, come here. She's from Chile. Hey, come here, my old guy or mi gordo. He, he's my fatty. He's my fatty. In the Hispanic world, they use gordo and viejo as a term of endearment, like saying sweeter honey. So sweetie or honey. So it does shock me that she said that that's offensive. Now I can say it as an offensive way. Tu eres muy viejo. But it's not if I'm simply describing the person. So that's 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 my take. You can you can reference that with a couple other people and kind of do a little test, get the test out there. But um, that is curious that 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 would be a a reaction there. So okay, él no es joven, es viejo. But thank you for sharing that, by the way. Thank you for sharing. I always love these. It, when you experience things in the real world, definitely bring it to the stage and we'll compare and contrast. You remember there's 21 different countries and within each country, you've got all these little circles of people and what people are used to. Okay. Muy bien. Excelente. Now, what I will say is this, you can soften it up and say, él es mayor. Mayor is older. So él es mayor. So I would say, oh yeah, he's older, meaning he's not younger than that person. He's older. But if I want to describe my 90-year-old grandfather, there is no offense at all if I want to say, él es un hombre viejo. Okay. Uh, just like there are words here that are rude. Uh, they are not so rude in England. Yeah. Yeah. Very good comment, Chris. Yeah. It really depends on the country too. So so um, great feedback from you guys. Good, good. I love this interaction. Okay. Perfecto. Ella no es gorda, es. Okay. Okay, muy bien. Some of you might have experience with Spanish, or I know some of you do have some personal experience with Spanish. Is there another way to say delgada? Anybody, anybody know another way? There's another way I'm thinking. Flaca. Flaca, excelente, muy bien. There's another way of saying delgada, flaca. Uh, the standard, probably delgada, would be would be more commonly used, but... Flaca, you might hear. Okay, excelente. Uh, él, here we go. Él no tiene pelo la, el pelo largo. Tiene, and include the, the word hair, because we want to make sure we include that. Él no tiene el pelo largo. Tiene. Good. Now, I noticed some people are typing pelo or el pelo. Believe it or not, it's optional. You can say, él no tiene pelo largo or él no tiene El pelo largo. That el is optional, and that also depends on where you might be raised. So I say el pelo corto or pelo corto. So it's not wrong. All right, muy bien. Perfecto. Ella tiene el pelo lacio. Now there's, um, you can also say liso instead of lacio, liso. Ella no tiene el pelo lacio. Tiene. Good, excelente. And there's a couple different expressions for curly hair as well, but we'll use rizado. Okay. Ella tiene. Now, wait a minute. I'm confused. She's a girl though. Ella tiene el pelo. Why don't I say rizada? Why don't I say rizada? Interesting. I'm confused. Oh, yes. Nice job, Amanda. It's following pelo. So it's modifying pelo. El pelo. Rizado. Excelente. Excelente. Okay. Muy bien. Uno más. Ella no es hombre. Es. It's the opposite of man. Mujer. Excelente. 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 So trying to review these opposites, it has, a, has us roll through some of the descriptions and whatnot. Okay. Excelente. Muy bien, clase. Okay. Vamos a hablar de la palabra llevar un poco. Ella lleva una falda y una blank color café. You can also say de color café. Um, okay. Chaqueta. Excelente. Excelente clase. Excelente. Yo quiero otros ejemplos. Vamos a repasar algunos otros ejemplos. Okay. Con personas famosas. ¿Qué lleva Justin Bieber? ¿Qué lleva? Can we type in the chat? Now, he's got a bunch of stuff on, so there's a bunch of answers. ¿Qué lleva? ¿Qué lleva Justin Bieber? Okay. I'm seeing some answers come through. 
él lleva dos camisetas, ¿no? Ok, ok, excelente. I'll share some of your answers in a bit. You can see him rolling through. Él lleva un sombrero. Él lleva zapatos de tenis. ¿De qué color? ¿Tenis son rojos o anaranjados? ¿Son rojos o anaranjados? Can't really tell. Maybe rojos. Una camiseta azul. Una camiseta blanca. Sí, zapatos rojos. Ok, muy bien. Oh, lentes de sol. Muy bien, excelente. O gafas de sol. So, gafas or lentes or anteojos, three ways of saying glasses, better de sol. Good, sunglasses. Él lleva pantalones, ok, pantalones, azu pantalones azules or jeans, excelente. O vaqueros, like in España. Muy bien, clase. What is he, he's got on his wrist there. Anybody know what that is? How, does, how would I say watch? Anybody know how to say watch? Wasn't in the book, but I'm curious. Ok, reloj, excelente, reloj. Él lleva un reloj de oro. Maybe it's of gold. Who knows? Okay. ¿Qué lleva Selena Gómez? ¿Qué lleva Selena Gómez? ¿Qué ropa lleva? ¿Qué lleva Selena Gómez? ¿Qué ropa lleva? Okay. Botas negras. Okay. Muy bien. Una blusa amarilla. Amarilla. Make sure that E is on the amarilla. Botas negras. Oh, una bufanda. Good. That's a bufanda. Nice job. But it's negra. Una bufanda negra. Y vaqueros or jeans azules. Excelente. Excelente clase. Muy bien. Um, ¿Qué color de pelo tiene Selena Gómez? ¿Es pelo rubio? ¿Es pelo negro? ¿Es pelo canoso? ¿Es pelo castaño posiblemente pelo castaño de color café pelo café you can use that as well ok excelente excelente que lleva la famosa Taylor Swift who we're going to see on Sunday probably a lot vamos que lleva Taylor Swift excelente ok es una falda ok una falda blanca make sure that Concordancia, that agreement is there. Una falda blanca. Oh, sandalias. Yeah, that, those might be sandalias. I'm not sure what type of shoes those are. Zapatos negros, sandalias negras. Sure. Eh, oh, ella tiene el pelo rubio. Sure. Ella tiene el pelo rubio. Now, the curious thing about rubio is I can say she has blonde hair or she's a blonde. So if I say ella... Tiene el pelo rubio. How would I restate that and say she's a blonde? Anybody want to try that one out? How do I do that? Would it be es rubia? Es rubia. Good. Ella es rubia. Excelente. Ella es rubia. So we're using es and tiene. She has blonde hair. She is a blonde. Ella es rubia. Ella tiene el pelo um, Rubio. Now, fast forward until the end of the semester when we have our one on one conversation. So, we will eventually have an interview one on one with every one of you. I will be asking basic questions to begin with. Say, hey, do you have a brother? Do you have a sister? Describe them to me. And you could say things like, oh, yeah, tengo una hermana. Ella es rubia. So, these are all the things we can recycle. Okay, muy bien. Um, el profesor. Se llama Miguel Ángel García Díaz. Now, question for you. Which is his paternal last name? Which is the paternal last name? Okay. García. García. And the maternal, obviously, would be Díaz. So he has a middle name. Ángel. Okay, muy bien. But if I didn't have Ángel, would we assume García was the middle name? We got to keep in mind. He's got two last names. Miguel Ángel García Díaz. Okay. Sus blank son García Díaz. Now that we just talked about it, how do I say last names? Do you remember that? Okay. Muy bien. Muy bien. El apellido, los apellidos. Perfecto. Los apellidos son García Díaz. Okay. Now we got some big numbers just for the fun of it. We haven't really talked about 
um, the hundreds yet, but it's sort of, it's very simple. Um, you've got the word cien and then you've got cientos. I'm going to give that little chunk of word there. You put a two in front of it, doscientos, trescientos, and you just keep that cientos rolling with all the ones, cuatrocientos. Now there's some exceptions. You wouldn't say cinco cientos. You would say quinientos. But this, we, we don't need to memorize the hundreds yet. It's not the purpose of it. As long as we see it in the examples, doscientos, doscientos, we just have to know what 50 is. So doscientos, good. Everybody's writing it in already. <laughs> you guys are on, on, on top of it. Doscientos cincuenta, doscientos cincuenta. We'll get to the bigger numbers later, but it, you'll find that it's fairly easy. Okay. Perfecto, perfecto, clase. Mi padre es un hombre muy blank. El no es perezoso. What is it? ¿Qué es el opuesto de perezoso? Okay. Perezoso, excelente. Perezoso, trabajador. Now, here's an, also another cultural fun fact. When we talked about spelling, the vowels never change in sound. Perezoso, perezoso. But sometimes the consonants will change depending on the country. In Spain, a lot of people, and I think I mentioned it in one of the classes earlier, sometimes people think they have a lispy sound. It's lispy, but it's actually not. The Z in Spain is pronounced like a TH. Like we say Thursday. Our, our TH sounds like a th. I think I'm thirsty on Thursday. But in Spain, they don't have the TH. They have a Z. And it sounds like this. Perezoso. Perezoso. Now, if the lisp happened, it would be perezoso. But perezoso. So whenever you're spelling, a, a person in Spain will grow up being able to distinguish between that. No, it's spelled with a Z and an S. Perezoso is spelled. But a person growing up in the Americas might misspell that because they hear perezoso. So they might write it as P-E-R-E-S-O-S-O because -S -O, they hear a s sound. It, it, it's interesting. Um, all right, here we go. Vamos con otros ejemplos. Otros ejemplos. Ella no es antipática. Okay, el opuesto de antipática. Anybody know the answer? What is the opposite? Ella no es antipática. Es excelente, chicos. Ella es simpática. Muy bien. Ella no es antipática, es simpática. Muy bien. Otro. Él no es sociable. Es. Él no es sociable. Es. Okay. Oh, I love it. I love the, the options. Okay. Some people write an antisociable. It's actually callado, quiet. The opposite of social is quiet. Antisociable. We'll use ca callado, callado. Um, sociable habla mucho, callado no habla mucho. En el libro vamos a usar el, el, la palabra callado, callado. Very quiet guy. Okay, siguiente. Ella no es fea, es... We got... A variety of options. I just picked one that was in the te textbook. Okay, good. We got bonita. A lot of you are writing bonita. Guapa, bonita. I used guapa, but bonita is in the book. Excelente. Perfecto. Perfecto. And I just doubled out on that one. I did not change that one. That one's supposed to be honesta. <laughs> and I think I'm going to go ahead and drop out of this and stop sharing because that's going to annoy me if I don't fix it with you. So we're going to fix it right away. You, We have two typos that we're seeing here, and that's okay. Just shows that Adams is not perfect, which is all right. Okay, excelente. We fix it live, though, so it shows up in your lesson. Okay, excelente. And hopefully I put the right gender. So let's go ahead and go M... Ella no es honesta, S, and as many of you are showing me in the chat here, excelente, yeah, mentirosa, okay, mentirosa. So 
Honesta is honest and mentirosa is a liar. The opposites. Okay, excelente. Él no es generoso. Es. What is the opposite? That's a hard one. You might have to look that one up. What, how do I say stingy? Somebody that doesn't want to spend money. Stingy. Generoso is generous. Stingy. It starts with a T. Okay. Okay. Excelente. It's hard because you got to use that little ñ, little squiggly line above it. And if you don't type it in, that's fine. I know your intention was there. So, él no es generoso. Es tacaño. Muy bien. So, I just grab from the end of the chapter and try to pick opposites to review and recycle. Some might appear on the test, some might not. But as long as you know that there's an opposite to a lot of these uh, descriptions, antipática, simpática, sociable, callado, fea, guapa, bonita, honesta, mentirosa, generosa, tacaño. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. A little bit of grammar here. All right. Grammar. We've got el... Los, plural, singular, the articles. La, las, plural, singular, the articles. So we have el sombrero, el, the hat, es muy barato. Everything's singular, everything's masculine, okay? That's the example. Vamos a practicar, okay? Blank camisa es rojo. Write out the entire sentence for me. We'll get practice typing out the entire sentence. What, it, what article and Ending what I'll, what I put. Okay. Muy bien. Excelente. Excelente. La. Okay. La camisa es roja. Excelente. Número dos, clase. Blank chicos son blank. Plural masculina. Plural masculina. Muy bien, Nicole, excelente. Muy bien, muy bien. Ariana, Mia, Shannon, todos. Edita, wow, Tiana, man. Qué rápido. Carter, Marisa, gracias por la participación. Mucha participación en esta clase. Excelente. Los chicos son serios. Excelente. Los chicos son serios. Número tres. Falda blank, no, ¿cuál es? Falda blank. Falda blank. Okay, okay, okay. Excelente. Love. I love how you guys are just typing away. Now, if we were in a face to face class, it'd be so much easier to just kind of call on your random and have you speak up and it just but but this is great. This is great. Great participation activity. La falda es nueva. Okay. Now that is three strikes and I'm out. All right. So once again, we fixed that live. And in my eyes, spotted it immediately right when I saw it. Singular and not plural. Excelente. Singular, not plural. So let's go ahead and share that again. Perfecto. Es rápido. Muy rápido. All right. Excelente. Gracias por su paciencia. Okay. Excelente. La falda es... <laughs> You've got to be kidding me. All right. Here we go. Third time. Fourth time is the charm. Um, let me get back into it. Although I do tell my students while I'm fixing this, my high school students, I said, whenever I have a typo or an error and you point it out, I always keep a little bag of lollipops. I know it sounds childish, but they love the hell out of it. If I you catch a typo on on the board somewhere, point it out. You get rewarded, um, and uh, and it's fun. They like to pick typos because right away my eyes spot it. It's just me not double checking things, which is fine. And it's a good learning experience. Sometimes when we commit an error or a typo, when we fix it, then um, we have a uh, it sticks in our memory better. We we can remember it. And and I know this is this is we're going to continue, but I have to tell you this this is cr crazy fun. When I was in college, I'm in my early 20s taking Spanish classes, and I was taking a class called Dialectología. And in fact, my wife was sitting in front of me. She was a friend and not my wife at the time, She's sitting in front of me. We chat, 
the, the professor, it's all in Spanish. Our major was Spanish. So the professor's talking in Spanish the whole time. And we're sitting there talking and he mentions that he's like, in la pagina, I'm going to say it in Spanish how he said it. In la pagina 18, hay una errata. That's what he said. In la pagina 18, hay una errata. And I type, you know, hit the shoulder of Ines and I'm like, hey, Ines, did he just say that there was a rat on page 18? Una rata, una rata. And she's like, no, una errata, E R R A T A. That means typo. So he's saying there's a typo on page 18. And my ears heard una rata, not una errata, which sounds very similar. Una errata. So I had four erratas. All right, muy bien, excelente. Three and a half, because that one I had it in the moment. Bien, numero cuatro. Okay, blank traje. Uh oh, that doesn't end in an O or an A. Ooh, what am I going to do? Blank traje S. Oh no. How do I figure that one out? Oh, okay, yeah, sometimes you just got to memorize it. Excelente. Good job. Muy bien, muy bien. El traje es negro. Perfecto. El traje es negro. Okay. Número cinco. Número cinco. Blank vestidos. And you know what I'm going to do on this one. Let's just start counting them up. Let's see if we can get to a dozen tonight. Let's see if we can get there. Anybody want to type in which what I'm trying to fix right now before I show the screen? Type in the chat what I'm fixing. Did you guys spot that? Right when it appeared, my eyes caught, caught it. Okay, there we go. Share the screen again. All right, we're almost at a half. We're almost at a half a dozen. That's great. We're cruising. So I'm curious to know what you guys typed in the chat. Anybody? Yes, good, Shannon. Good catch. Excellent. Yeah, I had it singular and it should have been plural. Okay. All right. Muy bien. So, lo blank vestidos son, blank vestidos son. Okay, good. Amarillos. Los vestidos. Tengo, tengo una, una pregunta. pregunta. Sí. So, for number two, um, why for los chicos son serios? How come it's not seriosos? Oh. Is good. that for, is that for, like we, so it'd be like nosotros, would that be seriosos? Or am I just mix, starting to mix stuff up? Yeah, I think it's just a mix up. In fact, serioso doesn't exist. So the word is serio. And all we do is, since it ends in a vowel, we just have add to the add S. to make it plural, which okay. is great. Yeah, and all words that end in a vowel and we're making it plural, you just have to throw in the S. We don't have to go S-O-S. -S. Okay. So if we were to do that, we would say, rojosos <laughs> or uh, nuevosos but yeah seriosos kind of makes sense because we say serious and it sort of sounds like that but no just simply add the s okay. add the s and you're good so los chicos son serios now if i said el chico es serio i would take the s off and it remains singular el chico es serio great question by the way okay numero seis Last, oh, sorry, just gave you that. Chicas son blank. Give you that last one. Las chicas son, what do we do there? Now it ends in a consonant. I can't simply just add an S. Excelente. Muy bien, clase. Las chicas son trabajadoras. Excelente. Now, you notice that on, um, yeah, that's the only one that ends in an R on this one. So we have to add the AS, trabajadoras. Excelente. All right. ¿De qué color, qué color de ojos tienes? Yo tengo los ojos azules. And I decided to put all the cool colors so you can see them. Azules, verdes, marrones, or cafés. Some people will use cafés. That's fine. Um, negros, grises. They are gray eyes, which I found very curious. And de color miel. That's a typical way of saying hazelish eyes, right? De color mía, looks like the color of honey. Okay, somebody already answering the question. De qué color son los ojos, okay? De qué color de ojos tienes? Yo tengo los ojos de color miel, good. 
Los ojos oscuros, you can, yeah, I have dark eyes. Sure. You don't have to totally specify the color, but dark eyes. Excelente. Now, how would I say I have dark brown eyes? Which goes first, the dark or the brown? So, yo tengo los ojos marrones oscuros. Yo tengo los ojos marrones claros. Excelente. Yo tengo los ojos marrones. Good. Marrones oscuros. Negros oscuros. Now, I would think that you wouldn't need the oscuros if you're going to use negros because they're it's it that the color black is dark so it's sort of redundant it's only with marron because it could be very very shades um okay muy bien clase otra pregunta otra pregunta qué color de pelo tienes qué color de pelo tienes we have options pelo negro pelo castaño pelo rubio pelo canoso and we apply the claro and oscuro just like we did with the eyes Tengo el pelo castaño claro, el pelo castaño oscuro. Now, notice how the redhead is not tengo el pelo rojo. That's not how you would say it. You actually say, I am a redhead. Soy pelirrojo. Soy pelirroja if you were a girl. Okay. Tengo el pelo castaño, el pelo... Now, yeah, so we, we want to change it. Instead of saying I have dark red hair, yo soy pelirroja. That's all you would say. Soy pelirroja. Now, I guess you can say if I, it's not wrong to say tengo el pelo rojo oscuro. It's not very typical. Usually that's if you're going to put a, a wig on or, or spray, spray your hair blue. Tengo el pelo az, azul and, and use a color like that. Like you dye your hair red. But if you're a natural redhead, it's just whatever, whatever shade it is, it doesn't matter. Soy pelirroja. Um, when describing here is castaño the only way to describe it? No, you can say tengo el pelo café. You can you can you can even say tengo pelo marrón, but it's more common to say castaño because it's like saying brunette, castaño, and that's that's ninety. I'm going to throw out a stat for the fun of it. 90% of the time it's castaño, but you can hear other ways of using brown like marrón and café. And that's valid. It's not wrong to say that. Okay. Excelente. Excelente. Tengo el pelo castaño. Perfecto. Okay. Vamos a seguir, chicos. Aquí tengo el verbo ser. Yo soy, tú eres, el es, usted es, you, you are, formal. Nosotros somos, vosotros sois, ellos son, ustedes son. All of the breakdowns. And I wanted to have some examples. Soy estudiante or somos amigos and then you have the verb llevar which means a couple different things but we've been using it as to wear yo llevo una camisa rosada yo llevo lentes llevo lentes yo llevo pantalones negros okay así que Julia blank una chica seria. Which verb are we going to use and how do we conjugate it? Let's see here. Julia blank una chica seria. Julia blank una chica. Okay, good, good. I'm seeing the correct answer already. Excelente. Muy bien. Muy bien. Hopefully I don't have typos on this one. I'm going to rack them up today. Um, okay, excelente. Julia Es una chica seria. Okay, okay, okay. Número dos. El blank una camisa gris. Okay, I'm already starting to see people use the word S. There we go. Excelente. Now I'm seeing a little bit of it. Okay, so el lleva. Excelente una camisa gris. He is wearing a gray shirt. Una camisa Gris. Excelente. Yeah, it's very important, the context clues here, right? Número tres. Yo blank muy joven. Okay, excelente. I've got a dual screen here. I'm going to go ahead and do this real quickly before I share the answer with you because I'm now going to share it again. I saw a sixth typo. 
I tried to beat 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 me to the punch. Okay, excelente. Yo soy muy joven. Excelente. Yo soy muy joven. Número cuatro. Número cuatro. Yo blank los ojos azules. What verb and what conjugation? We're getting a little bit more difficult here. Okay. Good. Excelente. Careful how we what context clue. Our eyes. Do I say I am blue eyes or I have blue eyes? Oh, you know what? This is a trick question here. I threw out an example that it's not said or yavad, and I didn't give you the other option, but I commend all of y'all for writing it the right way. I don't have a sample verb here, but yes, you're right. Yo tengo. And I I, I will update this um, later on, but yo tengo is another way to describe ourself. I am tall. I have blue eyes. And I could have placed the sample verb with the mix of these two. So my apologies there, but good on you for catching that. Yo tengo los ojos azules. Outstanding. So like I said, we can include yo tengo into the mix there. Yo tengo. All right. And the next one, here we go. And <laughs> that one is not animated. That's pretty fun. I just gave you the answer. Here we go. Uh, Diana, Diana blank, una señora gordita. You guys write that out there. Okay. Okay, perfecto. Diana S. Diana S. Now, hold on real quickly here. Get back to that. Diana S. Diana S. Una Señora Gordita. Okay. A little bit of technical glitches here. There we go. I was wondering what happened. Okay. Muy, muy, muy bien. Now, if we were to, everybody take a look at that. Give me two seconds here. Two seconds here. I'm going to update it real quickly here. Okay. Here, boom, 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 boom. Tener, okay. All right. Okay. Put that right there and right there. Good. Now we go, we can go ahead and exit out of this. And it'll magically appear here. All right. This is just for video reference in case you want to rewatch this. I always like to have my uh, all the tools necessary for you to be able to be successful. And I don't want to leave out the wonderful word tener. So I just went ahead and included that right above there. So if you get yo tengo, tú tienes, él tiene, um, nosotros tenemos, vosotros tenéis, and ellos tienen. So we've got that word included. We definitely want to include all of our family members. All right. Good. Excellent. That reference is there for video purposes when you go back and watch this. Muy bien. Vamos a continuar. And wonderful. And also thank you for your patience. Um, ¿Cuántas personas hay? Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis. Seis personas. Seis personas. Hmm. Blank. Es un hombre joven, tiene el pelo negro y lleva sandalias. ¿Quién es? ¿Quién es clase? Ok, ok, excelente. Excelente. Él es Eloy. Eloy es un hombre joven, tiene el pelo negro, lleva sandalias. Excelente. Ok. Um, ¿Cómo es? Yo quiero saber cómo es Ángela y qué lleva. ¿Cómo es Ángela y qué lleva? Ustedes pueden escribir un ejemplo. ¿Cómo es? When I say cómo es, I'm not saying how is she. Like, how is she doing today? Well, she's a little sick. No, I'm saying describe her. Describe her and what is she wearing. ¿Cómo es y qué lleva? We can talk about height. We can talk about hair color. We could talk about clothing, everything. Okay, muy bien, excelente. Remember vestido rojo, vestido rojo. Y, pero, ¿cómo es? ¿Cómo es? Somebody give me a little description. 
Ok, ella tiene el pelo castaño. And what else is it? Pelo castaño corto, right? Ella tiene el pelo castaño corto. Perfecto. Another second to, to respond to that. Ella lleva zapatos rojos. Excelente, lleva zapatos rojos. Muy bien, excelente. Excelente. Ella, now let's try to use complete sentences. I know and a lot of you are putting really cool vocabulary, but let's try to make it into a sentence. Ella lleva un vestido rojo. Ella tiene pelo castaño. Ella es bonita. And let's try to use them in a, in a, in a sample sentence there. Excelente. Sample Sample out here. Here we go. Okay, there we go. All right, so ella se llama Angela. Angela. Uh, Angela es una señora o señorita. What do we think? Okay, probably señora. Okay, okay. Y ella lleva un vestido y vestido rojo. Ella tiene el pelo corto. ¿Es rizado o liso? O lacio. The book uses lacio. Rizado o lacio. Ok, ok. Excelente. Rizado. And posiblemente, somebody mentioned this, posiblemente Ángela es la madre de Eloy. Posiblemente es la madre de Eloy. Ok. ¿Cómo es Marcela? Marcela, ¿y qué lleva? ¿Cómo es y qué lleva? ¿Cómo es y qué lleva? Ok, Marcela, ¿qué color de pelo tiene? ¿Es largo, corto? ¿Es bonita, fea? ¿Es delgada, gorda? What are some descriptions? ¿Es alta, baja? What are your opinion? We really can't tell the height. Um, ella lleva una falda blanca. Ella lleva una camiseta negra. Good. Ella es delgada y bonita. These are great examples. It was much I always tell my high school students, as much detail as possible. We can even guess on the eyes. We can't see them, but ella tiene los ojos marrones oscuros. Muy bien. Okay. Okay. Una persona más. ¿Cómo es Omar? ¿Él es hombre o mujer? Él es hombre. What are some things we could say about Eloy? Ok. Ok, posible, posible. Ok, Marcela es la hermana de Eloy. Es posible. Sí, claro que sí. Pero, ¿cómo es Omar y qué lleva? Omar es hombre. Muy bien, Omar es hombre. ¿Él es delgado o gordo? Definitivamente, él es Delgado, ¿verdad? Él es delgado. ¿Y, ¿Y qué lleva? ¿Qué lleva? Lleva. Omar es hombre alto. Lleva una corbata roja. Una camisa blanca. Corbata roja. Ok. Oh, él no lleva pelo. Ok. I'm glad somebody wrote that. Now, if we do want to say that he's not, he doesn't have hair, we don't, we don't use the word llevar. That means to wear. Because if I said no lleva pelo, I would think of a wig, pelo postizo. <laughs> He's not wearing a wig, pelo postizo. So we want to use the word no tiene pelo, which there's a word for bald. It's calvo. But you can say, él no tiene pelo. Perfecto. Él no tiene pelo. No tiene pelo. Muy bien. Excelente. Él lleva. Make sure when you say lleva, it's... El lleva with an A. El lleva una corbata. Lleva with an O would be I'm wearing. Yo llevo. Excelente. Muy bien, clase. Ahora, yo quiero otras personas más famosas. Tom Cruise, por ejemplo. ¿Cómo es Tom Cruise y qué lleva? ¿Cómo es el famoso Tom Cruise y qué lleva? Ok. Lleva un... Traje, lleva un traje azul, ok. Es bajo, ya, yeah. yo estoy de acuerdo. 
me, Amanda, estoy de acuerdo, él es un poco bajo, no es muy alto, no es muy alto. Él lleva un traje azul. Make sure when we spell él, it's just E-L instead of e -L, l o Él lleva, él es delgado. Sí, 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 sí. Uh, ok, I got a question. ¿Él es joven o viejo? <ríe> es una opinión, ¿no? <ríe> ok, no sé. <ríe> I think he's like 56, right? Uh, 56, no sé. Él tiene 56. Uh, viejo más o menos. I like that. Yeah, that's a good answer. Viejo más o menos. Mm, somewhat. Lleva un traje azul. Ok, excelente. ¿Cómo es Halle Berry y qué lleva? ¿Ella tiene el pelo largo o pelo corto? ¿Ella lleva pantalones? No. Yeah, muy bien, Carter. Good answer. Uh, ok. Uh, es delgada y lleva un vestido negro corto. Sí, corto. Muy bien. Uh, yo, no es una falda. Es un vestido. No es una falda. Es un vestido. Ella, ¿cómo es ella? Es, es, es bonita. Es, um, no es muy vieja. Um, es mayor, pero no es vieja, vieja. Uh, es delgada. Sí, 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 sí. Excelente. Muy bien. Y ella es muy buena actriz. Ok. And lastly, before we finalize this section, yo quiero saber cómo eres tú y qué llevas hoy. What, how would you describe yourself and what are you wearing? Give me a couple of sentences. I'll sit back and watch the chatter. ¿Cómo eres tú y qué llevas hoy? Yo... Yo soy viejo, más o menos. Soy delgado. Tengo los ojos azules, el pelo castaño. Um, yo llevo una camisa rosada y llevo pantalones negros. Ok. Ok. Pantalones negros. Make sure everything agrees in gender and number. Pantalones negros. Now, when we describe ourselves, we'll make sure we go yo, yo. Well, you don't have to say the word yo, but soy, tengo, llevo. Those are all the yos that we're learning. Soy, tengo, llevo. Llevo un suéter azul, pantalones azules. Mm, tengo el pelo uh, canoso, rizado. Or um, is that castaño? That must be castaño, rizado. Um, llevo una venda en la cabeza. Oh, okay. Bandage on the head. Una venda. Excelente. Um, llevo un suéter verde, pantalones gris, pantalones grises, pantalones grises. Tengo los ojos verdes. These are great examples, by the way. Llevo una camisa gris, llevo una camisa gris, pantalón, llevo lentes azul. Okay, muy bien, muy bien, muy bien. Excelente. Llevo lentes azules. So it's plural. Lentes azules. Lentes azules. Okay. On the test, you're going to have to describe a famous person. And we, we don't need to take time. I just wanted to show you this because you're doing great with descriptions of Tom Cruise and yourself. But you have options. Look at all these cool adjectives. Agresivo, alto. And you've got some nouns. Corbata. You can say lleva una corbata. Uh, or you can say lleva vestido, what they typically wear. Um, like, um, you know, I, I could say a Barack Obama. I always see him in a suit. So lleva un traje or corbata. Um, I can say Taylor Swift. Ella es muy simpática. So let me use Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift es delgada, guapa y trabajadora. So if I were to describe her, I got three words. Delgada, guapa, trabajadora. And there's no wrong answer as far as opinion goes. You can express your opinion. But there is a wrong answer with grammar. So make sure it's delgada and not delgado for Taylor Swift. Or if you're talking about um, LeBron James, es, uh, you can say él es uh, guapo and not guapa. So just make sure that you have the gender number correct when, when doing that. And you can practice this. Okay, excelente. Siguiente sección. Tenemos un párrafo. Un párrafo. Lectura. Okay, we're gonna, I'm going to read this out loud to you, and you're going to tell me if that's true or false. Now, we're going to answer that question right away, but we want to hear the whole thing. In fact, actually, I want, I want uh, 
volunteers to read. Let's let's do that. I'd prefer you guys reading. Uh, anyone want to hold their hand up in front of their face and I could just call them quickly or I can just randomly call on you. Okay, Carter, go ahead. Why don't you start us off? Hola, me llamo Eloy Ramirez Osanto. Keep going. Um, okay. Soy un chico joven, estudiante en Cal UC Berkeley. Tengo el pelo corto, negro y ondulado. Okay, muy bien. El pelo corto, short hair, negro, black, and ondulado's wavy hair. So it's not rizado, a tight curl. It's a wavy hair, ondulado. Excelente, Carter. Otro voluntario? Okay, Mia, gracias. Soy fuerte, pero no soy gordo. Soy delgado. Soy moreno y guapo. One more sentence. Normalmente llevo pantalones cortos y una camiseta. Camiseta sen, sandalia mm -hmm. o zapatos de tenis. Perfecto. Uh, no, ¿Ustedes comprenden todo? ¿Comprenden todo? ¿Hay una palabra difícil? ¿Voluntario? ¿Hay una palabra difícil? ¿Cómo se dice fuerte? Fuerte. Fuerte, fuerte. Fuerte es strong. Soy fuerte. Good, excelente. Soy fuerte, whether one moreno y guapo. So that needs to have clarification. They're using the word moreno. That might be the first time you've seen that in a lesson. It might be in the textbook, if I can recall. But moreno's got two ways of looking at it. Moreno means dark complexions. Now the problem is, is that's different used differently in the Americas versus Spain. In Spain, it's usually referring to dark features, meaning hair color and eye colors. My wife has dark brown eyes and black hair, but she has very light skin. But she in Spain is considered morena. But in Latin America, it usually refers to skin color. Darker skin color, you'd be more moreno. So know that that's how they're describing that. So soy moreno y guapo. You can... Depends on the region on how you want to look at his description. Okay, excelente. So we're on mis colores favoritos. Voluntario? Voluntario. Okay, Nicole, gracias. Mis colores favoritos son el amarillo y el rojo. Mm -hmm. Soy estudiante y tengo una mochila grande. Why don't you finish it off? You're doing beautiful. En mi mochila tengo lápices, borradores, bolígrafos, Cinco cuadernos y muchos libros. Mi universidad es grande y bonita. Okay. Tengo muchos amigos inteligentes en la universidad. Okay, a lot to unpack on that. Now, you're familiar with all of those, but there's some supplies that were in the textbook. We haven't really pushed them in this class per se, as far as our lessons go. But take a look. We got en mi mochila, in my backpack. Tengo, I have lápices, pencils borradores, which are erasers, bolígrafos, which we mentioned one time on when we were, when we were talking about how many cuantos bolígrafos hay, how many pens are there. We did a little example with that. Uh, pens, and you could say pens a couple different ways. Cinco cuadernos, five workbooks, y muchos libros, a lot of books. Okay, la universidad es grande y bonita. Okay, Eloy es gordo y tiene el pelo rubio. ¿Cierto o falso? Some of you have already typed it in. Excelente. Excelente. La respuesta es... Brrr. Correcto. Es falso. So you might have to answer some questions on a reading task. And I just wanted to give you a little taste. A little taste. And we don't need to read it because you guys did a great job. Okay. Now, you might have to put some introductory exchanges back and forth. Hola. ¿Cómo te llamas? Me llamo Grant. Mucho gusto. ¿Cómo estás? Oh, regular. Mm, uh, ¿Cómo estás tú? Muy bien. What, so if we could piece together, you're, you can say something like, ah, buenos días. ¿Cómo estás? Your amigo would say, muy bien, gracias. ¿Y tú? You can say, um, regular. Okay. Hasta luego. Adiós. Something that connects. If you say something like, buenos días. ¿Cómo estás? And your response is, Hasta luego. 
there would be no connection. So, and, and I actually don't mind if you get something similar to this, you can even write in other things that would work. That's not on the list. These are just suggestions. And it does say use phrases from the list, but I am very big into communicating, even if it's not on the list. If you show me that there's a, a good communication back and forth and it makes sense, I'll give it to you. So there's just, I think there are limited options here. We don't have buenas noches. We don't have estoy cansada, cansado. I mean, we could throw in a whole bunch of fun stuff, right? All right. So know that I'm flexible on that, but there, there's something similar to this that's going to come up. Okay. One last thing that I actually want to practice briefly. Excelente. And I'm actually going to put you in breakout rooms to do this. There are a couple of people that don't have their cameras on. Hopefully you're still with us. But when you go into the breakout room, it's always nice to turn your camera on so you can see your classmate. So when I do put you in breakout rooms, I want you to try to do this next activity, okay? And, and uh, so it's describe your friend, uh, una foto que tienes de ella. So you might have a, a picture of a friend, uh, a picture of a, a classmate, or whoever. I'm, I'm flexible with that. And you're going to have to try to answer these pictures. Now, you don't need to have an actual picture with you. Just men mentally think of something. But you're going to have to go ahead and answer these questions. ¿Cómo se llama? ¿Qué ropa lleva? Pretend you're looking at the photo. ¿En qué color es? ¿Cómo es? Physically describe him. ¿Es alto y guapo? And then personality. ¿Es trabajador y generoso? So we can start out. Mi amigo se llama Hugo. Right here they said, es mi mejor amigo. That can help you start your sentence. Se llama blank. En la foto lleva blank. So you can use these sentence starters as a guide. Es alto, tiene el pelo rubio, es trabajador. You can use all, all these guides to help you. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. I'm going to give you one minute. I'm going to put on the time card one minute to jot down on your notes or a piece of paper in front of you, something that you'd like to say, a description of a person you'd like to do right now within a minute. Can we jot down a couple ideas? And then I'm going to put you in breakout rooms and then you're going to go ahead and, uh, and have a, a, a quick round Robin. You're going to read or say what you thought of or wrote down to each person. You're going to take about a 30 seconds to do that. Okay. Well, first breakout room at option here. Okay. One minute, minute on the clock. And I'll leave this slide up here so you can use these guides to help you. Let's give about a minute. Okay, I think that's enough. If you didn't, if you feel that you don't have a lot of description in the moment, maybe you could think of something, but short or small, your effort is all I need. So I'm going to go ahead and exit out of this now that you've got some thoughts because you won't be able to see this in the breakout room. So we're going to go ahead and exit out of this. I'm going to stop sharing. We're going to go ahead and set up some breakout rooms here. All right. We're going to organize breakout rooms. Uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, we're going to do three or four to a room. Yeah, because if I do any more than that, see, so yeah, I will go three or four to a room. Here we go. So let's do that. Organize the rooms. All right, three or four to a room. Just somebody take the lead and go, I'll go first, and then just go around the clock. And, uh, and uh, I'll come back in a couple minutes here. All right. Todo bien. Good luck. Buena suerte. Buena suerte.
we doing, Victor? Are you uh you able to get in that room, Victor? All right. All right, we have uh Josh waiting for Josh. Where'd you go, Josh? I'm really struggling to keep up. I don't think I can um do this. I'm gonna Hang out there then. Don't worry about it. I don't want you to stress out. You just sit here tight. We'll give him a couple minutes. Yeah, and it's, it's just I'm, no I'm to probably going to end up dropping out of the class and then have my brother tutor me with the book oh. or something. But oh. I'm just, it's like I, I finally today got some of my stuff hopefully dealt with. Hola, 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 Coca-Cola. Muy bien, muy bien. Excelente. Oh, coming back in. Excelente. Breakout rooms are 30 more seconds and everybody will be pushed back into the classroom by default. I see room five is really active. They're still talk, chatting it up. Room two as well. Very good. Hopefully I gave you enough time to read and, and express yourself. About 15 more seconds. Okay, okay, okay. All right. And we are back. All right, good. Everybody's coming back in. Okay, well, let's just get right back. Hopefully, you're able to describe somebody. That's wonderful. Excelente. Okay. Um, muy bien. So that's going to finalize the format of what you can expect. Some of these are going to be similar. Some of these are going to be tweaked a bit, but it's roughly the same experience. So what I want you to do is keep keep something in mind. You can always go back to last week or the week before. If there's something we talked about that you felt was beneficial to, to you, you can always review it again and, and, and practice it. I always want to remind you, and I know it's a broken record, but listen and read, listen and read, even though it's a basic listen and read, listen and read, practice all the other stuff as well. But that constant consistency of the language will get you to grow exponentially and of course, I always recommend a whole bunch of podcast introductory ones, more advanced ones, but get your ear adapted. Ear has got to adapt eventually. Um, and then write every day. I'm going to be, I'm going to say this every week. You're going to get tired of me, but I, I got, I'm pushing it because it's very important to be consistent. So we are going to finalize the class. Uh, we uh, are ending off uh, a little early because it's a review day and uh, we've finished everything. Um don't forget you have a test that you're going to do by next Friday. Now, you don't have a discussion board because I want you to focus on finishing up the Connect assignments. I want you to do the test. And there are two additional assignments that introduce Chapter 2's vocabulary. So try not to wait till the last minute. And one last bit, bit of advice. When you're doing discussion boards, I appreciate those that are doing them. Try to do them maybe three or four days in advance because what happens if you wait till friday night if a lot of you wait till friday night there's not a lot of students to respond to because you have to respond to your classmate maybe a comment a question and if you all wait until friday 8 p.m and you post and you're like wait a minute am i the only one that's posted how can i finish my homework if nobody else has posted so do do your classmates a solid and maybe do that on wednesday maybe or, or even before that anyway Muchas gracias. Ya terminamos. Buena suerte en el examen. Very good luck on the test. Hasta luego. Hasta luego.